Renowned American writer Raymond Carver is celebrated for his succinct yet profound short stories. His nomination for the National Book Awards and Pulitzer Prize in Fiction underscores his literary significance. In 1988, he earned a prestigious spot in the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Carver stands as a leading figure in the dirty realism movement, prevalent in 1980s American literature, which delves into the gritty realities of everyday existence. Influenced by the likes of Anton Chekhov, Samuel Beckett, and John Gardner, Carver masterfully juxtaposes mundane settings with characters grappling with existential despair. Despite his limited publication output due to personal struggles, Carver's impact on the short story genre is profound, with scholars crediting him for its resurgence. His influence reverberates through the works of contemporaries like Richard Ford and Tobias Wolff. Controversy surrounds the extent of Carver's authorship, with debates centering on the editorial alterations by Gordon Lish. What we talk about when we talk about love, a cornerstone of Carver's oeuvre, epitomizes his thematic exploration of love, marriage, failure, and communication barriers. Published in 1981, this collection solidified Carver's place in literary history. As the collection progresses, each story builds in complexity, aiming to challenge the reader's perceptions established in preceding tales. In the penultimate narrative, Carver delves into themes of love's elusive definition and the limitations of verbal communication in conveying its essence. The storyline centers on two couples, Nick and Laura, and Mel and Terry. Nick, in his second marriage to Laura, a legal secretary for nearly 18 months, contrasts with Mel McGinnis, a cardiologist now wed to Terry for four years after a previous marriage to Marjorie. Set against the backdrop of an afternoon gathering around Mel and Terry's kitchen table in Albuquerque, the narrative unfolds through dialogue laden with palpable tension especially between Mel and Terry, whose constant bickering underscores their strained relationship. Although Nick serves as the narrator, scant attention is paid to him. Instead, the narrative zooms in on Terry's past with her abusive ex-partner, Ed, Mel's involvement in a car accident as a doctor, and his lingering animosity toward Marjorie. Both Mel and Terry seek validation from Nick and Laura regarding their respective circumstances and definitions of love, yet the younger couple remains non-committal. The title hints at love's centrality to the narrative, alongside the theme of language's inadequacy in articulating it, and the character's struggles to move past their pasts. Through their exchanges, it becomes apparent that love transcends mere verbal expression. Actions, not words, signify its presence. While Mel espouses a belief in love's spiritual dimension, he questions the character's comprehension of it, while Terry's romanticized view of Ed's violence evokes Mel's criticism. Terry, subscribing to the notion of kick me so I'll know you love me, implies a masochistic understanding of love. Laura and Nick assert their grasp of love, Nick expressing it through a tender gesture of kissing Laura's hand. Terry, observing the younger couple's affectionate display, jealously predicts a decline in their relationship over time. Reflecting on her tumultuous past with Ed, Terry recounts harrowing experiences of threats and violence, including Ed's eventual tragic demise. Mel, attempting to articulate his concept of love, recounts a poignant anecdote of caring for an elderly couple injured in a car accident, seeing in their enduring bond a testament to profound love. However, Mel's musings grow more convoluted shifting from romantic ideals to a yearning for the protection of medieval armor. His declarations are met with pragmatic responses from Nick and Terry, undercutting his romanticism. As the afternoon wanes and intoxication sets in, the conversation loses coherence, drowned in the consumption of gin. Their initial verbosity gives way to silence, leaving only the rhythmic pulse of their hearts echoing in the dimming light. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.